What do you see from this Oklahoma offense? Uh, incredible tempo. I mean, it's going to be uh, that's going to be a. Uh, um, the, the key is us getting our cleats in the ground and being ready to play. And then, uh, you know, the, the second part of that is uh, obviously really good uh, across the board talent wise at the skill positions and up front, big athletic kids up front that can move people and um, guys that can do things after the catch. So it's a it's a scary crew. And they like to spread you out. And then run they, you. they do extremely wide splits. And um, I think they they uh, do a really good job of seeing the pictures that you're in, um, you know, whether or not you have more people in the box than they do, and and uh, the quarterback knows what to do with it. Uh, he's been so seasoned in this system, you know, even going back to Central Florida, he's running the same stuff, and he's, um, you know, really really uh, capable to to dish this thing anywhere on the field. Coach Levy seems to have adopted what he was learning at Baylor under Art Bryles from a defensive perspective. What makes it so difficult to slow down that offensive scheme? Because they're never wrong. You know, if the quarterback's doing a good job. You know, I, I don't know if those guys go home at, at six o'clock or what, because you know it's just put in the quarterback's hands. Because, you know, if, if he's got a favorable box to run it, they'll run it, and you know they should they should gain yardage. And if they don't, then they're going to throw one on ones all over the place. And so, um, you know, we have to we have to figure out how we're going to negotiate that. How do you combat the ratios? Because essentially that's what you just said. It is it's a favorable box one on ones. How do you combat that? Yeah, and really I think it's on on me to dictate probably a little bit. You know, with what with what we're presenting to them, and if if, if we're if we're loading it up in there, then we're going to have to win on the outside. And if we're uh, if we're not, then we're going to have to we're going to have to stop the run. Does a lefty quarterback present any strange? Yeah, it's strange. Yeah, we we don't have the capability of uh, re replicating that on the scout team. That's uh, no, I don't know. It's it, it's it's been a long long time since I can remember going against a lefty. It'll be a it'll be a different deal. I don't know if it really changes anything though. How much pressure is on their defense uh, when the offense scores ten points to get out, get some turnovers? And yeah, I don't know. We don't. Thing. Yeah, we don't. We don't talk about it. We we just do uh, our performance, and and we don't uh, um, we don't worry about really what's going on, on the other side. I don't want those guys looking at the video boards. I don't want those guys, uh, you know, thinking about it. I just want those guys thinking about their execution. And so we're just we're just hanging on to that. You guys have been really good about creating turnovers through the first three games. How do you keep that going against the offense like this? I think I think you got to play fast, and I think that uh, you know one of the things these type of offenses do is they get you on on your heels, and you don't play fast. They get you out of position. I can't tell you how many snaps, uh, you know, watching these guys, how, how that all eleven guys on defense weren't aligned properly. I mean, you're gonna have a hard time um, creating turnovers, making big hits, breaking on balls if you can't even get yourself uh, where you need to be pre-snap. And so I think just get get in the line, getting your eyes where they belong, and then letting it go from there, playing as fast as we can. Do you have any more status on updates on the status of Nate Matlock coming into Saturday? Uh, we're going to find out more today on Nate. Um, it's uh, it's better than what we thought it was going to be uh, on Saturday uh, a week ago. So um, uh, hopeful there, and uh, you know we'll, 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 that'll be a game day deal though. Obviously affects your substitution patterns. Are you still able to sneak some guys in That's, when they're going fast? You know, and we, we practice that. We've practiced that. I know it's a it's a weird drill that our guys hate doing. We have certain situations where we will sub where our guys are taught to substitute. You know, they, they can't do it on their own because they're never going to make it. You, you know, you might be able to get on, but you're never going to get the other guy off. Um, so we have a certain set of uh, uh, times when we coach our guys to substitute, we do that drill in fall camp two or three times. Uh, we'll, we'll do it again today, you know, just to replicate um, when are the appropriate times that we, we have time to get people on and off. Did they get, get you at all by surprise that they went for it on that last fourth down? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would have had the, the stones to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we knew they were a really good quarterback sneak team, so we were certainly prepared for, for that. Uh, be in the play if they, if they were going to do anything, but I, you know, we were we were definitely also very cognizant, especially since we had jumped a couple of times throughout the course of the game of just making sure we were holding our water in there um, if they did want to hard count that thing. So yeah, we we were ready to go. We just, uh, um, you know, unfortunate that it uh, uh, you got got it by a foot or foot and a half or so. What was the issue with the jump in there in the first half? I, I don't really know. I thought they had some peculiar. Uh, you know, s snap counts, and I, I, I you know, our, some of our guys were talking about some movement stuff that that they were seeing in the core. I, I didn't didn't really, I can't confirm or deny that on on tape, but uh, um, you know, it, it was loud for sure. So I don't know how the how the snap count could have been a thing, but uh, guys were just amped up and ready to go. I don't know uh, that those are those are dumb things that have happened to us a couple weeks in a row that we gotta we gotta eliminate. Now that Sean's 
no longer with the program. Do you, are you kind of rethinking that Sam linebacker that you might use a guy like Josh Hayes a little more in there? Uh, we, we've done that a little bit. The more that uh, that VJ Payne gets comfortable, um, uh, and that was kind of obviously week one we were a little hamstrung without Josh, um, and then uh, we did a, a good amount of it against Missouri, um, and we did a little bit of it uh, last week too, and I think that package will continue to develop for sure because they're just you know it's not anything that no knock against Khalid. I mean he's got a certain set of skills, you know playing man coverage is not one of those skills, uh, at least not against wideouts, and so. Um, he's, you know, that, that, that's, um, you know, that, that's something that we're, we're pushing for each week, uh, more and more and getting better, but it really relies not on Josh. Cause I think he'll handle that stuff. It relies on the other guys that we'll have to, to put in there, you know, and, and VJ being one of those guys as a young guy, that's just, you know, he, he's a work in progress. How dynamic and dangerous are OU's wide receivers? Uh, really good. I mean, Mims is. Uh, I'm sure he'll be in the in the Bolitnikov discussion and all that stuff. I mean, they're just and, and and it's a shame that some of those other guys don't get the publicity because they're good players. You know, they're, they're, they, those guys would be great players at a lot of places, and uh, they kind of get overshadowed a little bit by him. And you know, the, the, for that matter, the tight ends are good players, and the tight ends are, are dynamic uh, catching the football. You know, not maybe as dangerous after the catch uh, as as those receivers, but they're certainly capable route runners and receivers. Talk a little bit about Daniel Green's ability, has how he's evolved as a not just a run stopper, but also a pass defender now. Too. Yeah, it's been uh, that 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 interception he made at the end of the first half was was uh, very instinctive. Did a great job putting his foot in the ground and um, recognizing what was what was happening to us route wise, and 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 that was a big time play and. You know, he was so gassed. I, you know, I wish we could have turned that into some points, and um, you know, or he could have pitched it to somebody else. I don't know, but it was, uh, yeah. He, he's 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 evolved. He's continuing to become the total package. How much high level of player are you getting from your corners that relieves any uh, other areas that you can? Yeah, not that's worry that's about? a that's a good point. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, uh, just the experience that Julius has, and the experience that uh, Echo Boyd will have, um, it, it brings a little level of comfort, you know, to me. And um, because there's very few pictures that those guys haven't seen, you know, and, and there's very little that those guys can't do in one-on-one -on -one settings. And um, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this: that Omar Daniels and Jacob Parrish have have really come along too. I mean, they've, um, you know, those guys are playing, and, and you're not seeing those guys as much on the stat sheet because it's just not showing up. But those guys are getting significant snaps, and, and, uh, and they're doing a great job. And Jacob, as a true freshman, that's, that's impressive. What's the theme? Finishing as a one-possession game, how much do you grimace when you're watching the tape and see Drake Cheatham drop that pick six? Which yeah, you know, it's funny. I didn't see that uh, on, the, on game day. I was looking somewhere else. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I know he regrets it. And... and uh, Things like that happen, you know, and and uh, in games like that, and you know, we're we're going to be in games like that. It's it every play matters, you know, whether it's uh, us losing contain on a rush that matters, you know, us dropping a pick like that that matters, you know, it just amplifies those every little minute thing, and that's what we're trying to we're just trying to play each play and take those minute things and and master them.